So let's go back to the word puzzle that we, did, we started with um, a few videos ago. Due to Harvey Friedman, he's at Ohio State. Um, and you could call it, I think this is what he calls it, sequential Ramsey theory. It's the same idea that you have some sort of structure and you allow it to grow bigger and bigger. And the question is, must it always contain a certain kind of pattern? And so remember, I phrased it as we were trying to avoid this the match between simple strings. Um, and just like Ramsey, uh, Ramsey theory, the, the theorem is that you can't avoid it, that eventually you have to, to have this, this structure. So the theorems, just very briefly, one, um, and this is a very common theme in Ramsey theory, from what a little I know about it, um, it's easiest to actually prove it for infinite strings. If you actually look at an infinite sequence of letters with a specified number of letters, like three, for example, um, and no matter what the number is, an infinite string must have a match between the simple substrings. So remember, that was the kind of thing where one, two, two, one, 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 one. And then if you put a two, oh, this guy matches with, like, it's a subsequence of this guy. Um, that you can take these and delete some of these and not order, reorder them and then it's fine, this guy. Okay, so um, no matter, and this is for any k, any, that's a y, which is the number of symbols. You, you allow yourself a fixed number of letters to play with, or, oh, if, yeah, I was using a's and b's. I knew I was going to do this because he uses ones and twos. No matter, no matter what the symbols are, so this is k equals two that I'm using just two different symbols, and the, the theorem is you're going to get trapped. If you're trying to avoid a match, you're not going to be able to do it forever. Okay, So you first you can first show it for an infinite string. Um, and for many of these problems, that can be made to imply the two is that any sufficiently long finite string has a match. And that's more uh, directly what I've been talking about with the Ramsey, is that uh, you don't have to go all the way, way to the infinite string to, to guarantee a match, is that as you build the, the string out more and more and more, say you use four symbols, you start two, three, four, one, two, three, one, 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 two, three, four, one, one, two. I don't know if I even have a match yet. I probably do. Yeah, I do. Two, three, and then probably... Oh yeah, I've got lots of matches. Okay, so I didn't do a very good job avoiding them. But no matter how clever I was, the claim is I'm going to have to stop at some point, and you're, there's going to you're going to discover you have a match. Um, and it turns out that a lot of the basic Ramsey theory can be done this way: that you first root prove an infinite result, usually in a very non-constructive manner, maybe using some fairly high-powered mathematics in terms of the foundations of mathematics, um, and then you prove the finite result. Um, so remember the Goodstein sequences from a few videos ago. Um, that was this. It's a very similar flavor. Uh, that you are um, building. You 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 have some sequence that goes on and on and on and on, and yet surprisingly it has to terminate eventually. And figuring out exactly how far it goes before you terminate, and figuring out that you get these super fast growing functions, you get connections with proof theory. And the rest of the foundations of mathematics that tells you exactly what tools do you have to use to prove theorems like this. Um, and very briefly, I'm not going to go into it in too much detail, and this is why Friedman does it, because he's a researcher in the foundations of mathematics, um, that you can prove these theorems using sort of the full strength of traditional mathematics set theory and, and some fairly powerful uh, devices and axioms, but you can't prove them with a very, very stripped down version of mathematics. And that's exactly like the Goodstein sequences. So it's a very, very similar kind of story. Okay, um, so sufficiently long is pretty vague. Can we make that more precise? Can we make this an effective result, which means very more specific about the numbers? So we already know that n of 1, the maximum length string you can do before you're forced to have a match between the simple strings, is 3, and n of 2 is 11. Okay, and so uh, Friedman 
uh, actually he says, uh, this is just taken straight from one of, one of his articles that's on the web, um, that uh, he says that some gifted students were given the problem of thinking about n of 1, n of 2, and n of 3, and uh, that they got n of 2 as 11, or at least one of them did, and um, these are gifted high school students. And um, they didn't get much on n of 3, and so he asked famous mathematicians uh, for guesses about n of 3. He described the problem and say, what, you know, what would your guess be? I don't think he gave them, I don't know if he gave them a lot of time to work on it. Um, so guess is like 60, 100, 150, 200, 300. Notice these are in the same range as um, like Ramsey, the Ramsey, the bounds for Ramsey numbers for like R of 5, 5, R of 6, 6, R of 7, 7 probably is about this. That's not ridiculous, okay? But he does note that none of those people were in the field of combinatorics. Uh, then he went and asked Lovas, Hungarian uh, combinatorist, very famous um, combinatorist. He guessed 20,000. Okay. Well, and here's the punchline, or part of the punchline for why I brought this whole thing up. N of 3 is bigger than 2, 7,198 up arrows applied to 158,386. <laughs> and he says, Lavash wins the competition. He's closest, <laughs> which I think is pretty droll. Um, yeah, these were not close, and Lavash was nowhere near close either. Now, so this is surprisingly, this is, this is more of a Graham's theory Ramsey problem, a Graham's number Ramsey problem, than it is like the standard Ramsey problem. Standard Ramsey problem had bounds of this nature, we just can't precisely what, know what they are yet. Um, Graham's number is more like in this range. Okay, um, so let's locate this. This is in our fast-growing hierarchy. This is, because we're putting in a, a pretty decent number into here, I'll say, okay, that's about f omega of 7198, roughly, because that goes into that slot when that's an f omega. So it's at the f omega level with a pretty decent a little argument here, but not a lot beyond the f omega level. But that's just n of 3. Okay. Um, now he does have, now this is one thing you can say. It says that you, this says you will be able to keep going. So this already is a very big tension. You know you can't go forever if you believe this theorem that su so if there's a sufficiently large number. n of 3 is a finite number, and that's where you must find a pattern. But if you're clever enough, you can go very, very, very far without having being forced to do a pattern that's just three measly letters a b c or one two three whatever symbols you want okay um now it could be the case that you, you don't know an explicit upper bound for this you just know that it has to be some finite number and that it's really big well he does say he has a very crude what he calls a very crude upper bound for it and i don't th he doesn't seem to think that this is anywhere near the, tr the truth but it's something like two and then up arrow and then do two up arrow five five as the number of up arrows applied to two up arrow five five so you might recall that this is the kind of thing that you get out of um simple conway chained arrows and it, i'll leave it as an exercise to you guys to figure out what does this mean what's the closest approximation in terms of conway chained arrows but this is i think up to the, like the four chain level again so again in the realm of graham's number okay um, now, that's just three measly symbols. What if you had four symbols, A, B, C, D, to play with, and you do A, D, um, and then you do A, B, C, and then maybe another A, A, uh, and then maybe a C, and who knows, right? So that gives you some more room to play. It's definitely going to be bigger than here, okay? Um, and he says... Um, that n of 4, um, oh, by the way, if you want to see the original articles, go to the Wikipedia article uh, entitled Kruskal's Tree Theorem, and that gives a little bit of a way of um, where I'm going to go with this, um, and then the, the references at the bottom. Um, and there's this com random URLs, and one of those is called like long finite sequences. One of those is called enormous integers in real life. And they're they're 
lots of technicalities, but you can kind of extract the interesting stuff if you want. Okay, so n of four, um, that's going to be that's really a, quite a bit bigger than n of three, and n of three is already surprisingly big. He says, and he doesn't use quite this notation, but I'll use a slightly different notation. Take some a function f, which we'll describe in a minute, and apply it n times, and we'll describe n starting at one. Okay, and here f of k is uh, one of our favorite functions. This is one of the um, it's very, very close. It's basically f omega. And we'll just basically say it's r f omega from the fast-growing hierarchy applied to k. So that's, that's again, that's a nice fast-growing function. It's where we started using the ordinals. It's where we diagonalized over the, the up arrows. We put a, a variable in that slot, and we're applying it to k. And now, very much like the Graham's number story, this is very, very similar to the Graham's number description, we're going to apply that some n number of times. The thing is, though, with Graham's number, this was... Um, not a huge number. It was like 64, even for the, the publicly advertised version, the bigger version of Graham's number. Um, but here, n itself is something that's in terms of a lot of up arrows. He says 187, 196, 187, 196. Whew! Okay. <laughs> and so uh, n itself is, that's an f omega of this big number. Okay, so n of 4, the place, and this is again, this is a lower bound. n of 4 might be bigger. It is bigger, and it might be substantially bigger than this. But it says you can definitely go this far. So it's approximately f omega. So let's see, what does it do if you have f omega and then you compose it with itself many times? Oh, that's called f omega plus 1 of that number basically, roughly, um, and so it's roughly f omega plus 1 of f omega of a decent seed number, bigger than 3 anyway, which I often use, right? Okay, it turns out, if you want to locate this um, in terms of, and not use a big number like this, it's between, um, it's between f omega plus 1, Two of two, and it seems to be. I think it's close-ish to this. Okay, so it's bigger than this, but it's less than. It's substantially less than f omega plus two of three. Okay, so it's barely, barely at the f omega plus two level, but it's solidly at the f, f omega plus one level because it's f omega plus one applied to a pretty honking big number. Okay. So, and that's just f n of 4, note, okay? So, what is most interesting in these kinds of cases, and what applies more to, like, foundations of mathematics type stuff, is what's the growth rate of the function, right? It's not so much about particular numbers. Ooh, this is getting all messy. Okay, so what he says in this article, the Long Finite Sequences article, is that n of k is eventually, okay, so for large enough k, and uh, n not specified, but you can prove that eventually n of k is dominated by, it's less than or equal to, f sub omega to the omega plus 1 of k. So that's getting an idea of the growth rate of this guy. But it, so it's not that big, and then it's bigger than f any f beta of k for any beta strictly less than omega to the omega. So if you want to be a little more cavalier about it, and this is not probably what he would say because he wants to prove things more carefully and get them in refereed journals, very roughly if we want to locate n of k, it's looking right around the f omega to the omega level. It might not be quite, this doesn't, says it might not be quite that big, but it dominates everything else that's, that's less than that. So very roughly, you know, don't quote me on that. <laughs> okay. And uh, if you know, yeah, if you know better about this, then leave a comment, right? Um, so it's around at the f omega to the omega level. And that's solidly past what you can really do with uh, Conway chained arrows. Uh, and that's pretty cool that this n of k, it's, it's 
for you, a really simple definition. The rules to the puzzle are a little bit odd with the whole the, the definition of what a simple string is and how you match the simple strings. But it really doesn't take a, a bright student. I've you know, showed this to high school students. It doesn't take a bright student very long to start playing with it and get an idea of what the rules are. Um, and then you, you get these questions of, well, um, is this, is, can I just keep going forever? Can I be clever enough to have some algorithm that just keeps going on forever and avoids in a systematic way the simple strings? Well, the big result is no. There is an upper bound to this. It's not infinite. Um, and it's one of those things that's pretty counterintuitive that says, okay, you can't do it forever. Um, and most people's intuition about that is like, okay, well, then it's going to, I'm going to probably get to where I'm forced to stop relatively soon. And then maybe you go on for a while and you're like, oh, well, I can be clever for a while, but then I'm going to run into a dead end. But eventually I'm going to run into it, right? Well, yeah, you're going to run into it, but oh my God, it's going to be um, really, 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 really far, right? Um, so it's a, it's a very cool example of how big numbers very naturally come out of Ramsey theoretic problems. And of course, the famous Graham's number is an example. And then this goes um, a bit beyond Graham's number. In the next video, I'll show you another problem due to Friedman, which is a, a little um, fancier to state, but comes back to the graph theory type thinking and gives us uh, numbers that are bigger than anything we've actually seen before, which is saying something.